All right, good morning everybody. I'm Adrian, this is Jay, this is Philip. We're here together from Audio Excellence in Canada. Uh, a first series of um, uh, conversations that we're gonna have talking about equipment that we've played with, our experiences in audio, some of our best memories, some of our worst memories. Um, anyway, so today we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Hegel first. Um, so I started being aware about Hegel about three years ago, not all that long ago. Um, I had read a review in Soundstage magazine, online Soundstage magazine, it was a really good review. I can't remember which model it was, but the reviewer really liked it. And uh, from there, um, shortly after, the Canadian distributor Richard brought some samples over to our old location in Vaughan. And I remember listening to it with the MagnaPens and it sounded really, really nice. But we also knew at the time that we were going to be moving to our current location in Markham. So uh, I put it on back burner and completely forgot all about it. And approximately about two months ago, um, about two months ago? Something like that. Yeah, um, Richard brought some samples over and uh, um, we decided to take a listen. So this is um, our uh, um, feedback about uh, Hegel. So, um, Philip, why don't you start? Um, well, let me give you the backstory behind it. Um, I mentioned to the guys that we're going to bring Hegel in, and there was some ambivalence. You know, why do we need Hegel? We already have so many lines of electronics. They're all really, really good. Do we need another line? And I said, well, you know, it sounded really good back then, and uh, it's a great line of integrated amps with DAX built in. Why not give it a shot? Um, so, Philip was the first to actually audition it in the store. Now, Philip's background, just to sort of give you a, um, Another backstory. Philip is our resident single ended tube guy, horns, classic resident sound. Resident curmudgeon. Yeah, exactly. Resident curmudgeon. And, and uh, so um, when he likes something diametrically opposed, um, it's, it's saying a lot. So, Philip, why don't you take it away? Uh, well, my first experience with Hegel was that it looks super cool in the. Uh, all the reviews because you know you've got this little black box with only two knobs on it and um, that's as simple as you can get really for a piece of audio equipment you can't even see the on off button and so I was super excited read great things about it and um, of course the first time I heard it actually wasn't in the store it was at, uh, clients and we had delivered a pair of uh, events okay and he had Hegel I don't remember which piece it, is, it was or it is because they all look alike it doesn't really matter <laughs> which one it is. That's they true. all look alike. Preamp, integrated amp, even the power amp to a certain degree. They have similar features. So I have, I don't know which one it was, but it sounded awful. I mean, like, literally awful. Um, albeit he was listening to MP3s, Chinese music. His room was extremely hard, Very materials, nice. big glass table in front. Well, so, also to be fair, it was brand new when he got that Eagle, I think. Uh, he had accepted delivery just shortly before we delivered the events. But the amazing thing, of course, is that then he bought Macintosh. <laughs> and we were all happy because Macintosh and, 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 and uh, Wilson Audio is a really, really good well. combination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so fast forward, I'm still interested in Hegel and Richard is, of course, the distributor. And I like Richard and um, he has you know a lot of experience. And so I was really fascinated with the idea of listening to Hegel. I did not know at that time that uh, you, there was this other backstory with the store. So I did bug Richard a little bit about bringing Hegel in and then you said we're going to bring it in. I said, uh, Adrian, are, for sure are we bring it in? Are we bringing it in? And then suddenly it showed up and then it was like a window opened. Literally a window opened, especially when we hooked it up to the Magna Pants. Um, I did so not expect that. Right. So tell the story when you first connected it. I think we received the 390, was it? The 190? No, just the H90. H90 only? I thought there were well, two there was Well, there was a 392 that he brought, which right. was not the one that we ended up buying for the store demo. Right, but, but the, the first time when he brought samples for us to, to check out, it was the 390 and the 90, is that correct? Right, but the first thing we I hooked up was that 90 in the front room because it's simple to do. Right. And, and what was hooked up to it at the time? LRS. LRS is right. Okay. And prior to that, the LRS we liked, but yes. we knew it was a difficult speaker that because of the quasi-ribbon uh, architecture, you know, the panels are all the same now. 
And so from you know the get-go, the LRS at $880 is actually an audio file speaker and it has audio file demands. And I hooked it up to Peachtree, which was fine, sounded okay, but not great, which is more or less what I expected. And then I hooked it up to the H90, which at that price point, which is just over $2,000 Canadian, I did not expect anything. Really, I mean, the we had name and that's twenty five hundred dollars, and that was good. But the Hagel was just a lot, lot better in a way that was more like a system that was more than double the price. Mm. And so that was how the window opened. I'd never heard uh, inexpensive panel speakers sound that good and that well controlled, and it really expressed itself musically in a way that I hadn't heard before. Right. I wasn't expecting. And then we connected the, was it 190 or 390? The 390 the systems. to uh, the Sonettos, yeah. and I was blown away. Yeah. Because the Sonettos are very good speakers, but they're the basic Sonos Faber. So this is sort of like a entry point for people who want something better, and that's what the Sonetto represents. It's a good all-purpose speaker, and suddenly it sounded as good as the Olympica, and I was really shocked because suddenly there was bass all the way down to however low that speaker will go, which is probably around realistically about 40 hertz. And it was really well controlled. It was well textured. With a lot of power. A lot of power, a lot right. of dynamics, uh, layered. Uh, so you could actually hear individual notes. Um, it was just spectacular. And it just kept on getting better. Uh, in fact, uh, I sold a pair of audio physics speakers that we had around for a little bit and we decided we would test them. Uh, we just set it up like anywhere in the room and without a, any kind of careful placement and suddenly that speaker was singing. Uh, Jay did not want to let it go. Right. So and just as a, a background to that, we'd had a hard time really making the audio physics before sound spectacular. We knew it was possible, we just never really could get that magic out of it. It always sounds stage, that wasn't the point. We could never get it to, uh, uh, from a tonal balance standpoint and, and power and, and, and effortlessness standpoint, it just never really came alive. And then the Hegel went in and boom, it was like, wow. Well, literally the hair on the back of my neck was standing on end. And that seldom happens to, to me because, you know, I've heard so many things. I'm a little bit you know, jaded. jaded. I hate to say the, wor say the word, but, but it's true. Even Jay here was very surprised. Um, I, I immediately said, Jay, come in here, come in here, let, listen to this, listen to this. And I didn't want to hear the audio physics. Yeah. I was like, I don't even know what that sounds like. And then he was like, no, 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 this is different. Come here, listen. And I was like, mind blown. I was like, I was like these are not audio physics that I no. know. No. Um, and, you know, so, I mean, the good thing is, of course, that as a result of this little uh, kind of um, experimentation, um, we did end up selling uh, Hegel along with that audio physics, and the client is extremely happy. It actually fills a very big room, and it's you know it's just one of those things that you don't expect that. I mean, in audio, um, you know, we've just heard everything, and th these combinations, if there's a surprise there in a good way, then that's all you can hope for. Right, and especially given the kind of pricing that Hegel slots in, it's it's. You know, by, by, by everyday standards of, of a person who's not into audio, it's expensive. But in the context of an audio file, it's very inexpensive. The, the, the H90 is what, about 2200 Canadian, which means it's, uh, you know, what, less than 2000 US dollars. And, and it's spectacular, it's, it's, it's well made, sounds great, remote control, um, has airplay and so on. So anyway, Jay, why don't you take it away, your impressions of Hegel. Well, when I first um, got interested in Hegel, um, I actually contacted them for a review prayer. And um, Richard was telling me that it was really high in demand that he couldn't uh, lend me a pair at the time. So, but then we, the store got it and I got a message from, um, and you know, it's a black box, so it's not very impressive, um, at least to visual standards. And then I got an uh, email from Philip you know, raving, you know, this, this sounds amazing with our magnet pants. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, you know, there's one thing for another, a person to say, but for Philip to, you know, say that, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, why, well, better listen to this. It's the tough guy. So I, 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 I am a Luddite. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I go and listen to it, and immediately I, this is the best I've heard magnet pants, period. 
like I, I, you know, my first speakers were Magnet Pens, um, the Point Seven Eyes, and um, I paired it with, you know, with Philips uh, recommendations with multiple amplifiers, and uh, it never sounded as good as with the Hegels. Um, I mean, it sounded really good with Name at one point, but never like Hegel. Hegel, it's like it's like a whole different speaker, um, and it just sounds just opens a new window, just like Philip said. And the impressive thing about Hegel is, as as you know, um, I'm the, I'm the marketing guy here. So uh, when I was uploading pictures and stuff, um, Hegel proudly, you know, if you go on their website or pictures, they proudly open their units up to show the internals. And if you see the internals, it's you know. As as an audiophile and a nerd, you would find it very sexy because it's just it's a lot of stuff in there. The big toroidal transformers, lots of caps, you know. And the thing it has what like uh, the the three ninety has like four thousand damping factor. Well, so the integrateds are quite amazing because even the basic unit, the H ninety, has uh, a damping factor of two thousand, uh, which to give you an idea well-rated uh, D-class amps, which are extremely fast and very good in the bass area, yeah. usually rate in between 500 to 1,000. Yeah, and I mean, Accuface uh, e, E360, mm -hmm. which is a very popular amplifier um, nowadays, well, it's discontinued, but has a damping factor of 800. And I had a client yesterday back coming in saying, yeah, well, my amplifier already has you know big damping factor. And I said, no, let's look it up. And it had 800. Which is not bad. Which is, you know, as you said, a very good. good. But even the entry of Hegel has two thousand damping so, factor. Yeah. So the H ninety, the now discontinued Russ, the new H one twenty are all two thousand or more. Mm -hmm. And then and you get up to the old three sixty, the new three ninety, the five ninety. They're four thousand. This is one of the, the secrets of that amplifier. Whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. the way. That that amp has the ability to control movement of any kind of uh, dynamic uh, device, so planar or you know yeah. dynamic driver. Yeah. I think the impressive thing is that because we play around in the store with a lot of expensive gear in the first place, we would expect that we would hear the full potential of a speaker um, in the first place. But when we hook up, hook it up to the Hegel, it's like you know we never knew that a speaker can perform that way. Um, type of thing, so which is very impressive, especially given the price point. So anyway, to sum up about Hegel, <clears throat> uh, we're not saying that it's necessarily the best in the world. We don't know what is. Um, there's too many products out there to know. What we can tell you is that if you are looking for something really good, um, check out Hegel. Uh, I, I think you'll be quite impressed. We certainly are. Um, and if you're in the local area in, in, in Toronto and in GTA, uh, Canada, come come check us out. Uh, we're happy to do comparisons for you with all the different brands that we carry.